Welcome to Introduction to Finance. Welcome to Session 7 of Introduction to Finance. I'm Greg Pierce, your finance coach. And in this session, we're going to talk about interest rates and bond valuation and how interest rates affect bond values. A very interesting uh, chapter, very interesting for you, should you go buy a bond someday and how do I calculate the value of a bond. Uh, basically, there's one equation for uh, simple bond valuation, and there it is. It looks rather complex, but note that it's a compilation of what we learned in Chapter 5 and what we learned in Chapter 6. Um, chapter 5, present value, future value equation, and Chapter uh, 6, we see present value annuity up there, and we should recognize these from prior chapters. So it's a building um, building a good foundation here with these chapters. Something we learned in an earlier session is now being used in a future session. Uh, basically, the bond value today, present value or price of the bond is equal to present value of the coupons plus present value of the face. Uh, so we're going to learn a complete new language with bonds. So it's very important to pay attention to that and get some basic concepts down, and you'll uh, understand quickly how to uh, value a bond. We're also going to discuss in this session the Fisher effect, um, postulated by Dr. Irving Fisher, that uh, total returns are composed of real returns plus uh, inflation. So all the little r's that we've seen in the prior uh, two chapters are now Dr. Fisher's big r. Uh, a little confusing, but we'll straighten that out. So he, Dr. Fisher says that uh, total return is equal to a real component plus an inflationary component. There are seven learning objectives in session seven. First of all, we're going to talk about bonds and bond valuation. How do we value a bond using that one formula that we just saw? Uh, what are some features of bonds and some terminology? It's a whole new language that we need to learn to be able to discuss bonds intelligently. Uh, learning objective three, who rates bonds? Several prominent uh, companies look at bond ratings. They look at your, uh, the company's financial health and rate the bond accordingly. So we'll go into bond ratings and how that helps the bond investor. What are different types of bonds? We'll go over many, many different types of bonds and uh, how we calculate their value. Where do we buy a bond is uh, learning objective number five. Is there a store downtown where we can go to buy a bond or do we have to go elsewhere? In learning objective six, we're going to look at inflation and interest rates. How do interest rates affect bond values? As interest rates go up, bond values go down. We're going to learn mathematically why that happens. And finally, what determines bond yields? And essentially, it's a breakdown of the Fisher effect. Uh, so we're going to look at the connection between bond yields and the Fisher effect. First, bonds and bond valuation is our first goal to understand. Uh, bonds are just uh, debt securities and they're interest-only loans. Uh, they enable corporations and governments to borrow money from we the people, that's you and I, over the long term. For that, we get a, a return. Uh, bonds, as I said, are interest-only loans. You loan the money to the uh, corporation and you get your money back, typically in 30 years. Interest is paid every period. Principal gets paid back at the end of the term, at maturity. And there's a whole language that's affiliated with bonds that we have to learn, so let's get started. Coupon is the interest payment. You clip off the coupon, essentially, uh, each and every um, period, and um, essentially turn that in and cash it in. Uh, face value is the $1,000 price of the bond that you paid. Uh, again, usually $1,000 for corporate bonds. Uh, the coupon rate is the coupon on the bond. Um, divided by face value. So it's very simple. If it's an 8% bond, uh, has an 8% coupon rate, that means you're going to get $80 each period. Um, very, very simply. And I have a sample of a uh, bond here that I kind of made up. Uh, this one uh, I'll call the Coleman bond. Uh, it's very simple. It has an 8% coupon rate, and you can see at the bottom dangling $80 coupon. So we tear those coupons off. We go into the paying agent, and we, uh, if we're holding the bond, and we uh, basically cash those in. So the coupon rate, and we're going to call this my bond, that's a Coleman bond, um, is 8%. Uh, maturity, this bond will mature in 30 years. So if I bought it in 2010, it would mature in 2040. Um, and that's the typical term for a uh, corporate bond. Here's an example of a 
uh, uh, underwriting that was done by Merrill Lynch on the Coleman Corporation. Coleman Worldwide um, put out $575 million of bonds, $1,000 at a time, a liquid yield option note, which means it's a callable, puttable, convertible kitchen sink of all bonds. Um, and it's due uh, 2033. So it's due uh, quite, a, quite a ways out. And um, Sorry, 2013. It's due 2013, and uh, so that probably means it was issued in 1983 on this uh, Coleman bond. Essentially, here's the bond cycle. When uh, bonds are issued by corporations, municipal governments, and the Treasury Department, uh, we invest money in those um, organizations, and eventually we get um, our principal back at the end of the period when the bond matures, and we get uh, interest all the while. So that's basically, so the pr primary issuers of bonds are corporations, uh, the government, and municipal government, uh, federal government and municipal government. Uh, yield to maturity is a very important term we must understand, and uh, we have to know what it means and what which variable it is. If you notice that big long bond formula, it has uh, five variables on both sides of the equation. And so if we're given four givens, we can calculate any of the, uh, we can calculate the fifth. Uh, essentially, YTM is little r. It is the rate required by all other bonds in the market at the time. So my bond will always pay 8% for the, over the course of the 30 years, but all the other bonds in the market uh, will be paying differing rates over the course of the 30 years. So interest rates will go up and interest rates will go down over the course of the 30 years. If I need to sell that bond, I'm going to, uh, the price I get will be influenced by what is happening to interest rates at that time. In general, here's the, uh, the formula, and this is mathematically driven. If interest rates go up, bond values go down. And when interest rates go down, uh, looking there at Uncle Sam, bond values go up. And again, it's because of the mathematics. If interest rates go up, we're dividing by a larger 1 plus R. All other bonds in the market are paying more. Um, so mathematically driven uh, relationship. Just remember that if you do own bonds, watch the interest rates uh, going over the course of the 30 years. Face value bond is a par value bond, and that's a $1,000 bond. That's the price I paid today for the bond, and all other bonds in the market are uh, about the same price, uh, any new issue bonds. A discount bond is um, where I might sell my bond during the course of the 30 years, and I get less than $1,000. What has happened here? Well, interest rates, market interest rates have gone up greater than my coupon rate. My, my bond's always going to pay $80, but if interest rates go up above 8%, then uh, people will put their money where it's treated best and they'll go buy other bonds that are paying 9, 10%. And therefore, if I go to try to sell my bond, I will get less than $1,000 for it. Uh, premium bond is a uh, bond selling for greater than a thousand bucks. Here is the case where interest rates have gone down. My bond is still paying eight percent, and if interest rates have gone down to let's say six percent, um, my bond's going to be worth more than a thousand dollars because uh, my bond is still paying eighty dollars a year, and all other bonds in the market might be paying sixty dollars a year. So people will pay me more for my bond. Again, one formula uh, here that we're involved with with bonds. Present value or price of the bond today is equal to C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R, plus face value over 1 plus R to the T. Um, again, we're discounting cash flows here. There is some interest rate risk we take on when we buy a bond. Obviously, we're holding it for 30 years, and interest rates will go up and down over that time period. Um, so uh, one way you can minimize your interest rate risk is have a shorter time to maturity. So keep the time to maturity short and uh, keep your coupon value up. Higher coupon rate and a higher coupon and a shorter TTM will minimize your interest rate risk. And if you look at this table, you can see if you bought a, temp, a bond at 10%, uh, if you only hold it for a year, interest rates could go all over the place and the value doesn't decrease too much. But if you uh, have a 30-year bond and you see interest rates uh, going down to uh, 5%, uh, you're gonna see your bond worth $1,768 uh, but if interest rates go up to 20%, your bond will only be worth $502. So again, be careful if you have a long-term bond and um, be wary of interest rates. If you go to buy bonds, you must pay attention to interest rates. 
uh, bonds issued in the United States um, usually make two payments a year, so they're semi-annual. So whenever you see the word semi-annual coupon, you want to do some uh, mathematical uh, manipulation first because you're going to get paid twice. So instead of getting $80 a year, I would get uh, $80 spread over two payments or $40 each time I visit the paying agent. Uh, to make apples equal to apples to apples, you want to take uh, the, the R by 2 also. So because you're dividing your coupon and coupon rate by 2, you want to make uh, take R by 2 also so that you're comparing things on a similar basis. So YTM divided by 2. And then also you'll be visiting your paying agent twice a year, so 60 times over the course of a 30-year bond. So you want to take T times 2. So simply for semi-annual coupon bonds, T by, C by 2, R by 2, T times 2. And that will keep things and give you the exact right answer. If you forget to do that, your answer uh, will be slightly off on the price of the bond. Uh, here's an example. $1,000 face value bond is uh, quoted having seven years to maturity, seven years TTM, coupon rate of 14%, YTM of 16%. What is uh, the price given? This one is a semi-annual bond, so first thing you have to do is C by 2, R by 2, and T times 2 before you plug the numbers into the, uh, into the equation. So if it's a 14% coupon rate, that means on an annual basis it pays $140 a year, so we're going to plug in 70 for C. Uh, that's C by 2, right? Coupon dollars, 140 divided by 2. I'm also going to take R by 2, so if the required return is um, 16%, uh, the YTM is 16%, I'm going to plug in 0.08 for R. Again, R by 2. And then also T times 2. And so if this is a uh, seven-year bond, seven years to maturity, I'm going to take T times 2 and plug in 14 for the T, and I get a bond value of $917.56. Now, this is a discount bond. Um, why is that? Well, uh, that would say that interest rates have gone up, my bond was paying 14% uh, in a 16% environment. And so if people were to buy my bond, they would pay me less than $1,000. Uh, and that's the relationship you have to understand. If interest rates go up, bond values go down. How do you solve for this little r, um, this yield to maturity? Let's say you're given the bond price, you're given the coupon, uh, you're given T, you're given FV, and so on, you're solving for R. There are three R's in the equation. Uh, we basically do it by trial and error. Again, understand the mathematics first. Second, be able to plug it into a scientific calculator, the big long formula, uh, with all the attendant parentheses and, and uh, correct mathematics. Uh, plug it into your scientific calculator. Next, plug it into your financial calculator, which has uh, functions built for this purpose, and then finally be able to uh, type it into Excel, both in longhand, which is the longhand formula with all the attendant parentheses, and then also begin to understand as you become a more intermediate uh, Excel user, understand the Excel functions that are built and, and already canned into Excel, and you can solve these problems very quickly. You just need to learn the syntax, and that syntax is uh, called out uh, very carefully in our books. It's very, very easy once you learn the syntax of Excel and you can um, solve these bond problems for any of the five variables very, very easy. Um, so we do trial and error. Now we can guess smartly at R, can't we? Because we know that if uh, the price of the bond is less than $1,000, we're given the price of the bond, we're solving for R. If the price is less than $1,000, our coupon rate will be less than the required rate of return or the yield to maturity. And if the price of the bond given is like $1,020 greater than 1000 bucks, we know our coupon rate has to be higher than the yield to maturity. So we would start guessing higher. Um, well, for R, we guess lower in that case than the coupon rate, okay? Because the coupon rate, our coupon would be paying a higher rate of interest than the uh, yield to maturity all, or all other bonds in the market. So know to understand that relationship between coupon rate and R, and that will help you solve these problems as you're guessing and checking. Uh, debt and equity, when we uh, talk about uh, securities, we talk about debt and equity, as we said in session one. Uh, debt generally being bonds, sometimes loans and mortgages, equity being stocks. Um, so the, in, in the case of bonds, um, we are loaning money to the company, and so we are the creditor or lender, and the debtor or borrower is the uh, corporation, essentially, or the government. That is not any, uh, owning any interest in the company. Uh, unlike stock, where you get a share uh, of a company, 
Uh, with debt, you basically have an interest-only loan, and that's basically it. You have no voting power uh, in this case. The company has a, a, a liability to pay you. Uh, it's cost of doing business, fully tax deductible, uh, and this unpaid debt is a liability of the firm. They must pay you back. And again, companies do go bankrupt, and that gets into a whole other issue of bankruptcy court and who gets paid first, and there is a list of uh, in, in the case of bankruptcy, who gets paid first? And so the bankruptcy judge determines that, and hopefully you, you get some uh, pennies on the dollar. Bondholders do indeed get paid before stockholders, so that's a good thing if you're a bondholder. Uh, stockholders are residual owners, so they get kind of the last leftovers of the, of the company. But uh, bondholders are at risk also if a company uh, declares bankruptcy. Uh, debt securities can be classified as long-term or short-term. Long-term typically mature greater than one year, short-term less than one year, uh, sometimes called unfunded debt. Some debt, uh, other names for debt securities are bonds, debentures, which are unsecured bonds, and notes, which are typically short-term uh, debt. You'll hear the term note being used on a short-term debt. Payments on bonds, so you're entitled if you hold a bond to receive a principal at maturity plus regular interest payments. Uh, the coupon, now from a uh, financial statement viewpoint, the coupon or interest ex payment is shown under uh, uh, interest expense on the income statement. And the total debt that's issued, like that uh, 500 and some million by uh, issuance by uh, Coleman Corporation, is shown on the balance sheet under long-term liabilities.